Right, so yesterday <clears throat> we're continuing in the same topic, which is the most topic, important topic <clears throat> in our lives, and that is truth. Truth, to reveal what is the truth, and that that's going to be the idea of the Geula and the idea of Mashiach, to reveal the truth, the Emes. Emes. And maybe we can say that Emes starts with the letter Aleph, so we're going to put the aleph into the word into exile by just putting the aleph into the exile that's going to change the whole thing like turning on the lights turn on the light and the word exile in hebrew is gola so by putting the aleph into the word gola is it becomes geula so all of a sudden the lights go on and everybody sees what <clears throat> is reality that's what we have to do <clears throat> that's what we have to do how do we do it so it says, well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. First of all, just to know what you have to do. The proper we have the proper diagnosis of what is the problem, right? A person comes into the doctor and he says, you know, I have such and such a problem, and the doctor gives him the proper diagnosis. You ever the joke? There's a joke like that. That a man goes into the doctor and he says he's got terrible headaches. <clears throat> hard to breathe and his knees hurt and he wobbles once in a while and he doesn't know what to do and the doctor says you have a terrible disease you have only a month to live there's no cure for it i advise you to just have a good time whatever before <clears throat> and so the guy's all worried he's terrible tells his, parents, his family the terrible news so he decides he's, he takes trips all over the world and he spends money and then on one of his trips he goes and he wants to buy a new shirt New shirt. So he goes and he says, uh, I want to buy a new shirt. I uh, the, the best shirt you've got. Uh, I'm, I'm going to spend my money to, at least to, to, to get the most experience out of life that I can. I want a brand new shirt. What's the best shirt? I have a $1,000 shirt over here. Good. Give me a shirt, size 32. And the, the seller says, excuse me, sir, but uh, let me measure you here. You don't take 32. You have to take a 34. So says, listen, don't tell me what I have to take. I'm spending $1,000 for a shirt. I want size 32. He says, listen, I mean, you can buy whatever you want to, but I'm telling you, if you buy a shirt that's size 32, you're going to have headaches. It's going to be hard for you to breathe. Your knees are going to be wobbling. You're going to be shaking all over the... His whole problem was just that he bought two small neck size of shirts. It's not that he's going to die or anything. The same thing, you look at the world, you see the exile. What do you, oh, yeah, it's terrible. The world is going to come to an end. The Rebbe says, listen, I'm, I'm telling you what you have to do. Just put an aleph into the exile, and that's it. You can no problem. <clears throat> it's the whole thing is going to be fixed up, right? Change your neck size of your shirts. All of a sudden, everything, all the problems are going to go away. Okay, so what is exactly the aleph we have to put in? <clears throat> what do we have to do? And what do we? Is it so simple? Then why hasn't anybody done it up to now? What? what so the Rebbe is going to explain. Listen to this. We have to understand. No, in addition to this, Sha'al Yude Goulis Misraim, in addition to the exile of Egypt, Nifala Gilui, to reveal what's called the Alufo Shel Olam. <clears throat> the Alufo Shel Olam, the Aleph. The word Aleph means also the, the ruler. An Aluf in army is like a general. Alufo Shel Olam, that God is the ruler of the world, is we re was revealed in Egypt. It says that the. We talked about this yesterday. The whole essence, story, identity of the Jewish people is being in exile and getting out of exile. Being in problems and getting out of problems. That's Judaism. Judaism was born in exile, in Egypt. For absolutely no reason. They didn't do anything wrong. They were born in exile. right? <clears throat> Yaakov and his children, they went down to Egypt when there was the big famine. And all their offspring were born in Egypt. And all of a sudden a new king stood up and he made an exile. They didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't a punishment for anything. It wasn't that they had that strayed from the way of the Lord, and so therefore God put them in exile. No, they were born into exile. <clears throat> they were babies. They had done nothing done wrong. They were just born, and their parents didn't do anything wrong. Why? Because the essence of Judaism is to be in exile and to get out of exile. And that, in fact, is the whole essence of life. The soul, before it comes into the body, was free, but wonderful, felt God. And the soul is put into exile in the body. And the body is terrible. 
The body is awful. And the body sends us all sorts of, of, of fake messages and, and coded ideas and, and mistakes and, and hallucinations and worries and problems. The body is like the Jews being in Egypt to the point where the Jews in Egypt, they really believed that they were Egyptian slaves. That's the That was their identity. The same thing, the soul comes into the body and it really believes that this world is all there is and we just have to, you know, get as much as you can from it or run away from the world, whatever. <clears throat> Jews going out of Egypt indicates that we have a message to tell everyone why your soul is in your body and that there's an, a way not to get out and go back to heaven. That's the way it was beforehand. Right? Is to, to, to fix up the body. And the same thing is going to be with Egypt in the future. It's not going to be like going out that was back then that we destroyed Egypt. Now it's going to be we're going to fix up Egypt. We have to bring the creator of the universe into the universe. <coughs> the alufo shalolam into the olam. Okay, so here we go. And this is by means of what? <clears throat> that God is the ruler of the world. He conducts the world. Nifalu, <clears throat> so this will bring up about tremendously high things for the Jewish people. This was done in Egypt. What happened in Egypt? God himself revealed himself to the Jews. Huh? That was the essence of going out of Egypt. It was worthwhile. Before they were in Egypt, they didn't have a revelation of God. Being in Egypt, they got a revelation of God. It made all the suffering and everything worthwhile. <clears throat> okay, now we don't appreciate it because we don't know what God is. But if you can imagine a poor person willing, winning, let's say, a billion dollars, so that's a big thing. A person would be very happy. Well, God is the source of the billion dollars. That's even a bigger thing. God revealed himself to all of the Jewish people, everyone in Egypt, all the Jews in Egypt, they all hit the jackpot. That God is the only, is the king of the whole world. By means of this, this brought about very high things, that God revealed himself. But in his essence, the essence of God revealed in Egypt. Now, we didn't learn about that in, in Lakuti Torah. In Lakuti Torah, we just learned about the creation itself. <clears throat> We're not learning about when God gave the Torah. That's going to be a whole different... That, that turns the whole thing upside down. Ah, until Shakavana, that the intention of going out of Egypt was... The whole reason they left Egypt was for to get the Torah. <laughs> when he took out the people from Egypt, you serve God on this mountain. That's what God said to Moses at the burning bush. Shagilui Anochi, that the revelation of I am God, your God that took you out of Egypt, that's the first of the Ten Commandments, <clears throat> was revealed. God had revealed himself. I, God said, I am the God that took you out of Egypt. Well, but often in a way that was face to face. God speak to you. Face to face. It says in the in the Torah, in the, <clears throat> in the book of Deuteronomy, when God spoke to the Jews, it was face to face. God, the people didn't just hear God, they saw God. What does that mean? It's like the, the whole the high priest went into the Holy of Holies. See, he saw God. Shalomayla, this is above. <clears throat> Even the revelation of how God is the ruler of the world. That the God is the ruler of the world, that's the world. But when God gave the Torah, oh, that's, a, that's the essence of God in the world. How it is that God creates the world and conducts it, that's Breshi's Bore Elohim at the Shemayim Boards. God created the heavens and the earth. Like it's known that the Torah was before the world. This is before even the highest levels of the world. So God put the Jews into Egypt. Egypt is like the world. And when God took the Jews out of Egypt, it was revealed the alufo shalom, <clears throat> the master of the world, and even higher than that, God's very essence, which is even higher than anything to do with the world. That's the Torah. Higher than anything to do with anything in creation, all the spiritual worlds also. <clears throat> Allah has come and come, much more so. Kishimedubar all is geula mitis fashlema. When it's talking about the future redemption, then it will be nosaf. In addition to the fact that there's the re, the king of the world, will be revelation of godliness, which is above the world. Ela told those parrots, "This is Mashiach is going to reveal <clears throat> the essence of God, the reason why God is creating the world." Not just the fact that God is creating the world. <clears throat> it says by the, these by, by Mashiach, he comes from parrots. Parrots were the two 
sons over there, <coughs> one of the, 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 the <coughs> parents in Zerach, those were the two sons of, of uh, Tamar, and from them came the Mashiach. So it says, Peretz, Mashiach comes from Peretz, Ben Apartzi, it's called Peretz. Peretz, the word Peretz also means to burst through, break away, break open. <clears throat> when it says, Ela told those Peretz, the word told us is written full. When it's written, Ela told us a Shemayim of Oretz, that's higher more than what says, when the, when God created the world, it says, Ela told us a Shemayim of Oretz, it's also written full. Full means the two vavs are written. You don't have to write the vavs for it to be pronounced told out. But in the Torah, it's written full. <clears throat> so it says, when God created the world, He created, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. It's written over there with, the word is full, with two vavs. But when it talks about Paris, it's also two vavs. And the world, when it was created, was created full, complete. Like we said before, like a puzzle, all the pieces are there. <clears throat> but when came Mashiach, Mashiach is going to put the puzzle together. He's going to show what the whole thing is created for. Sheyechiru shelo be'erich l'gabi ha'matzav be'geula be'kol babel omadai. That the future redemption <coughs> by means of Mashiach is going to be infinitely higher than was the redemption that of the Jewish people from Egypt and from Babylon and from Greece. Greece was in the middle of the second temple. That's the whole story of Hanukkah. <clears throat> the whole world will be renewed. Like God says, I'm creating a new heaven and a new earth. This is a, a passage in Isaiah. Now when God says he's going to make a, a new heaven and a new earth, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden, you know, trees are going to start dancing and that, 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 that you know, giraffes will be the president of the United States or something like that. It doesn't mean that. <clears throat> what it means is that every, we'll see the godliness in everything. The heavens will be new. The earth will be new. The same thing in the Torah. We'll see the godliness that's in every word of the Torah. It'll be revelation of godliness. Gili panemius atik. Revelation of this a Kabbalistic level of atik. The inside of God's crown, it's called. Adla iloi kiloi. It'll be a revelation of God's essence in this physical world. Which that's the way it's supposed to be right now. Okay, so what's the Rebbe saying? What's the Rebbe saying? The world, the way we see it now, is just a vessel for something infinitely higher. Until the world won't be, except to know God alone. Therefore, the Jewish people, this is the language of the Maimonides, therefore the Jewish people will be tremendously wise, and they'll know all sorts of secret things, and they'll grasp the awareness of God according to the ability of a human being to understand. Why? Because Malay Ha'orz Day at Hashem, because the world will be filled <clears throat> with the knowledge of God. Another sentence from Isaiah. Isaiah. The world will be filled with the awareness of God uh, like water fills the ocean. As then, which says water fills the ocean, there's big mountains and big valleys in the ocean. You can't tell. Same thing, the world is going to be filled so filled with godliness and that the highest of holiest of people will be equal to the most simple of people. Then there'll be a big novelty in the Torah. Just like the world will suddenly become vibrant and alive and every detail will be miraculous. Also the words of the Torah. <clears throat> just like Alderach, Shagalos, Gaula, just like exile and redemption from Egypt was a preparation from going out of Egypt, so also the, the 2,000 year exile that we've been in now is only a preparation for receiving <clears throat> the true essence of the Torah, Gili Panimis Torah, the inside, the secrets of the Torah. When the Jews got out of Egypt and they received the Torah, it says that their souls jumped out of their bodies. It was too much for them. But now in the future, the souls will, therefore you could take the Torah, you could twist it. Right? The Torah could do it. But in the future, you won't be able to twist the Torah anymore. <clears throat> you won't be able to say the meanings with, that the rabbis said in the Talmud will be so evident and so obvious to everyone. And the holiness of the rabbis of the Talmud will be so evident and so obvious to everyone <clears throat> that they'll feel the godliness which is in every single word and every single interpretation that the genuine rabbis gave from the Torah. We'll see the Torah will scream out the truth of the Torah, of the truth that the rabbis in the Talmud revealed. That's what it means. 
<clears throat> and even more, all sorts of secrets of the Torah. Mas, a mistar tzimutel. The secrets of the Torah will be revealed. That's in the Song of Songs. It talks about the 47. Here we go. There's Rashi explains on the Shira Shirim, right in the beginning. In the beginning of the Shira Shirim, the Song of Songs, it says that God will kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. What does it mean? That in the when God gave the Torah, he just spoke. His mouth was sort of far away. But when the <clears throat> the, when and the Mashiach is going to bring that God is going to kiss everyone everybody that's going to be a Torah Chadasha the Torah will be like brand new <clears throat> to us, will feel the true deep meaning of every single word and letter in the Torah and keep in sense that all these things which they are tremendously high <clears throat> and we cannot possibly understand what they are now the <inaudible> olam Namely, that God Himself, the King of the Universe, will be revealed in the world, and that they, that's going to be the whole essence of what the Geula is. As Muhachim, we have to say that all this must be somehow or other hinted in the word Geula, and especially in the four letters of this word, which that makes up the main body of the redemption, is going to be the exile. With the Tosfos Aleph, the exile is good. And all we're going to do is add on an aleph. All these amazing things we just finished talking about, it's all contained in this word, gula. So in other words, exile we got. That we have 100%. All we have to do is put, add one-fifth, one-fifth, aleph. And so we say, here we go. How do you do it? In the letter aleph, <clears throat> there are three meanings. There's a lot of different meanings, but there's three the word Aleph itself means three things. The word Aleph, which is added to make Gola into Geula, there are many definitions. Aleph, like we said before, is Aluf, is the ruler. God is the ruler of the world. <clears throat> everything in the world, God is creating, is ruling everything. <clears throat> then there's Aleph, that's the language of teaching. Milashan Ulpana. Limud, <clears throat> like it says, and what is the Proverbs? In Job, I'm sorry, in Job, not in Proverbs. In Job, I will teach you wisdom. So Aleph means that God is the king of the world. Aleph means that God gave the Torah. Teaching, that's a higher aspect of God, gave the Torah. Then there's a third meaning of the word Aleph, which is even higher yet. And that is the letters Pella. Take the word Aleph, the letters backwards. Pe, Lamed, Aleph is Pella. Miracle. So the word Aleph is telling us we have to do three things. We have to bring God into the world. Three aspects of God. How God is the king of the world. How God gave us to teach us the Torah. And how God is <clears throat> a miraculous. He's above both of these two things. And it's an, our ability to reveal this in the world all the time. How? Let's see. Here we go. Uh, and just let me let me say before we get into this a little bit. It's very simple. All we basically have to do is think about God. We realize what God is. God is the King of the world. God gave us the Torah to explain why the world is here, and God is also miraculous above all of these, and this God that's above all these is giving us power. <clears throat> he's with us. He's helping us. He's never leaving us alone, and He's giving us power. This aspect of God is empowering us to do all this. <clears throat> so we're not alone. And if we just start thinking about this, we'll see that it's easier than we think. It's not that easy, but it's a lot easier than we think. Okay, ready? Here we go. In the service of transforming the exile, see how much we can get done over here. In the service of transforming the exile, Gola, into Geula, there are generally three aspects, three levels, three steps. First of all, revealing godliness, how God is related to the world. Not like we just learned in Lakuti Torah. God is like the soul, just like the soul enlivens the body. God enlivens the world. 
this is revealing godliness how is related to the world right must be something that's keeping the world going <clears throat> this is revealing godliness which is above the world second level revealing godliness which is above the world but there's some connection to the world like the torah especially by means of the torah the torah is before the world but the torah is in the world that's step number two step number three of aleph is that's pella revealing godliness which is totally incomparable to the world like we learned in Lakuti torah just now so we've called me <clears throat> in a way that god is totally separate <clears throat> and holy and removed from the world and especially by means of the miracles of the torah that that's going to be revealed in the future redemption that's pele the first thing is explained uh, in the world that's the aleph of alufa shalolam that god is the ruler of the world how it is that god is the leader and the owner and the director of the world and he's in the world the world the word for world olam is the same world as concealment and the world itself doesn't reveal god the world was created in such a way that it covers over godliness and the word of god which is constantly enlivening it creating it and bringing it to alive the world enlivening the world is concealed our service is to reveal the aleph this is the first level right to reveal the alufo shalolam the work of a jew is to reveal in the world how god is the king of the world this is whether in the whole world in general or in my personal world <clears throat> i'm not going to lie i'm not going to cheat i'm not going to be afraid i'm not going to be lustful i'm not going to steal things why because god is the king i'm not the king and Rev Shemai, when i look at the heavens i look at the earth so I see how wonderful you are, God. That's in Psalms, right? Kach, this is also in everything. You think about <clears throat> how God is creating us. By means of this thinking about God, that there's actually a human being that's walking in the world, me and you, and we're actually thinking about this as a creator to the world. This brings a gula. This brings about a redemption. Like it says, we say in our prayers in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, every creation will know that you created it <clears throat> a little bit higher in the aleph is that aleph is teacher it means this is aleph how is alufo shalolam the king of the world a little bit higher aspect than the aleph is how god teaches us teaches us aluf chachma it's like it says i will teach you wisdom i will teach you understanding like we said it's a sentence from job Giloi elokus revelation of god which will be in the future redemption, will be not only that God is creating the world, namely that he's the power which is creating and enlivening everything, but it'll also be also God which is above the world. That's the Torah. That it come, this comes from Aleph in the mind, wisdom and understanding. Alufcha, I will teach you. This is above from any of the emotions. The emotions, God created the world in six days. That corresponds to his emotions. But the Torah comes from God's wisdom. That's a higher aspect of God. That's aluf chachachma. The world comes from God's emotions, like it says, olam chesed yibane. The world is built from God's love. And especially, this is, <clears throat> and, and the Torah is above this. And especially this is brought by means of <clears throat> revealing the Torah, which is revealing the, the level of Torah, which is higher than <clears throat> the world. This is going to also, second thing, which is going to be revealed in the future redemption. It says that Alpayim Shana Kadma Torah Olam. It says that the world was two, that the Torah is 2,000 years before the world. The Torah is 2,000 years before the world. Where do we get this idea from here? Let's see, it says over here, 35. One minute, here. It's a midrash in Tehillim. It says the world, 2,000 years God was before the world. Oh, I lost a place over here. One minute. 
<laughs> okay, let's see where we are. Here we go. Yeah, okay, good. We got the kid. That's the Torah is 2,000 years. So that, that's the Torah is 2,000 years before the world. So we have one level how God creates the world, enlivens the world. That's how God is the king of the universe. Then we have the level of God always before the world. That's the Torah. So the Torah is 2,000 years before the world. What does it mean 2,000? From the words Alpine, the word Elif also means 1,000. But it also means teaching. Aluf chachma aluf chabina. I will teach you, Aluf, the same word. For teaching is the same word as 1,000. 2,000, what does it mean? The teaching, the word Aleph is teaching. I will teach you wisdom, I will teach you Bina. That's two Elephs, two thou. And then there's the third level. Afterwards, we can reach to even a higher level of Aleph, and that's Pele. What does it mean, Pele? Revelation of the miracles of the future redemption. Not just that God creates the world, that'll be revealed, that there's a creator, or that there's the Torah, the holiness of the Torah, like we said, there's going to be a new creation and a new Torah means God will be revealed. But there's a third thing also. <clears throat> Pele. It says, like the days of, of going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles. Miracles which are even incomparable to going out of Egypt. Especially the miracles which are in the Torah. <clears throat> like it says, Gal It says in Psalms, reveal, open up my eyes and I will show you and I will see, I'm sorry, the miracles which are in the Torah. The miracles which are in the Torah are greater than the miracles in the world. That's the revelation of the inside of the Torah. The secret of the reasons and the concealed mysteries of the Torah. That they are on their own infinitely higher <clears throat> even from the miracles of the world. <inaudible> will also be revealed by means of learning in the Torah. Or in the language of Hasidut, in the Svirot, let's take these three levels. Alufa Shalom, that that God is the king of the world. This corresponds to the Svirot, the aspect of God, which is called his kingship. The lowest aspect of the ten Svirot. That's revealing God's kingship in the world. Like we says, when you say Shema, you're supposed to make God a king over the, all the directions of the world. That's the word Echad means. The oneness of God, Achet, means the seven heavens and the earth, and Dalit is the four directions. That also includes all the emotions of God, how God is the source of the world. That's Malchut. <clears throat> the second level is teaching, learning. This is Aleph Chabina. This is intellect, Chachma and Bina. This is the Mochin Shaykhim Lamidos. So that the God is the king of the world, that's Malchut, Chip. And how it reveals God's emotions, the emotions of the six days of creation, that's how God is the king of the world. Second level is God's intellect, which is above the six days of creation. That's God's intellect, which is above the world. And the third level is Pele. This corresponds to not Malchut, or the emotions, or even Chachma and Bina. But this is Pele, this is Mochin, this is like the level of Keter. This is what's the crown, which is higher than all these levels. So it's known that now our main service is of God is to refine the seven days of creation. That's the lowest aspect, that God is a king of the world. And also we have to refine the Torah, the intellect which is relevant to the emotions. But then the future redemption, there's also going to be <clears throat> the third aspect we saw before. We're going to, first of all, refine the three aspects of the intellect which are not revealed. God promised to Abraham ten lands and he only gave to the jews seven and when mashiach is going to come we're going to get three more lands huh <laughs> all these college protesters that say we have to give back right we have to give the the the, the, the palestinian right which palestinian that was invented what in 1948 so that's how many years ago 70 years something like that ago so we have to give them back exactly the opposite we're going to take god is going to give us big chunks of Iraq and Iran and Syria and Lebanon and 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 uh, Jordan, it's going to be added on three lands to us. That corresponds to Chachma Bina Vedas. That God is now we're just working on the seven emotions. That corresponds to how God is King of the world, which was made in seven days. But in the future, God is going to give us the Torah, and the, the true Torah, and that's intellect. Intellect is Chachma Bina Vedas. That corresponds to. Kini and the Kinesi and the Kadmoni. 
It says, similarly also will be revealed godliness in the future. There will, in addition to the revealed godliness that creates the world, godliness, there will also be a re re revealed godliness which is above the world. It will be revealed God's essence in the world. <clears throat> There will be true essence of the world of God will be revealed. That's this level of Keter, the third level of Pella, which will be revealed. And tomorrow we're going to talk about this more in detail. Now let's learn, have a, a, a the Yom Yom.